Um, we're going to go into the NCCP changes and whatnot. Um, uh, Kurt Gorman from our, our district coordinator for the Okanagan South and Michael Butler from the BC Hockey Office just previously did a presentation to the Meyer Committee and to Kurt and let him do his thing and we'll go from there. Okay, well, thank you very much for all of you being here. Uh, there's some big changes going on here as far as coaching goes, so uh, uh, I want you to feel free to ask questions uh, so that we can help clarify those questions and, and be able to help you start in a good way this year with uh, the questions that you're going to get from your coaches because uh, uh, we've had meetings and we've discussed a lot of these things and we had a lot of questions and uh, it doesn't necessarily affect us per se as far as coaching goes but it does affect your coaches so uh, I'm sure they will be coming back at you once you sort of disseminate the information to them with a lot of questions and hopefully through our presentation we can answer a lot of those and that you uh, will have that information. So uh, as we go through the presentation, Mike and I will answer questions. Mike will give you a perspective from BC Hockey as far as how we're handling a lot of these things. Um, and uh, that's about all. Let's, let's continue on. So something that has uh, come down from Hockey Canada is the fact that we now have a mandatory checking program. And that only applies to the Adam, Pee Wee, and Bantam level. And all coaches at those levels need to have a, the checking program. Now, uh, as you can see here, this is, uh, th this is being implemented this year and on. We, we have through the hybrid clinic, which has now been changed to a different name, which we'll talk about later. Anybody prior or 2012 and present, they've already got this component of their, their coaching uh, certification. So they've been certified in the checking program. Uh, so they're exempt. They're not the ones that we're worried about, but there, there's a, a lot of coaches out there who took the hybrid program before 2012 that may still be in your system that need to get the checking component. And uh, we have to offer it to them. And we've got a number of ways in which we're going to do it. In fact, there's just two ways that we're going to, to, to really handle this. And I'll get Mike to explain a little bit more. Um, I'll just tell you about, first of all, we have the mentorship option, which is basically a standalone clinic. And you as a head coach can arrange to have that uh, happen through BC Hockey. You need to provide us with some ice time a classroom and we can opt for this just like a, an old specialty clinic and some of you may have taken advantage of specialty clinics and uh, basically that's how we would offer it. That's the one way that a coach that needs to get this checking program can get his checking credentials. What's the number of coaches for that? Kurt? That need this? No, no, for the when we sign up for the um, well, I mean, before when I've run specialty clinics, I've run them with five. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. That's where I'm going to let Mike answer the question as far as yeah, putting a number to it. Capacity to be honest, we can do from 10 to 40 to 50 if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, we need to get 5,000 coaches roughly done through this program this year. Um, moving on, yeah, moving on, we won't have this issue because we're going to try to put it into a Dev 1 course as well. So we should be able to saturate the coaching market with all of our NCCP offerings with checking. But for this year alone, we need to, to figure out a delivery mechanism to get that, potentially that many coaches put through. And the way we plan on doing that is we're going to have three regional training seminars. And we want to use people in your position or someone in your association who is responsible for the development of your coaches to take this training seminar. We'll put on in the island, the lower mainland, and in the Okanagan. And once they do that, they'll have the accreditation to teach it to your coaches. So our hope is to use your guys for that. And obviously there's gonna be MHAs that don't have a person of that capacity. So we have budget in, in our budget to move people around to get those, those certification happens. Jim, Jim wants to... Just another thing that I know that some of our district coordinators are already planning. Um, they're looking at saying, okay, when we offer a hybrid clinic, uh, we're going to offer our hybrid clinic and then we're going to do our checking module at the end of the hybrid clinic and we'll just set that up as a separate registration so that then we, and, and if you can get us a room that'll sit uh, 60 people 
We'll have 30 that'll take the hybrid clinic, and then 30 more can join in and take the um, and take the, the checking module that and, and then go and go on and do the ice session. So they're yeah. going to try to coordinate that, and that's like Mike was saying, the same with the the intent is the checking is going to be added to the div one. So as well with the development of one clinic, that can be an add-on as well. As is, uh, so it's it's there, and it doesn't have to be. Uh, another standalone. That, that's an inventory question I talked to you earlier. Yeah, that who came in late and didn't get the the sheet that's called the National Coaching Certification Program Program Updates 2004. They're on a chair in the back. And I'll say something quickly on that document. Yep. So that document we update every time we find out more information from Hockey Canada or figure out something for ourselves, and that's going to be constantly updated into our website. So um, it basically summarizes the logistical back end of all these programs. So we have a distribution plan every time it's updated to let your registrars know. So as we learn more and as more questions get answered on our end, we'll continue to update this document and sort of yeah. give that to you guys to, to work off of. Yeah. So, so just uh, go ahead. Just a quick question. Is this um, a motion that's going to be put at the AGM as a resolution? No, this was, is it, it is a resolution, yeah. absolutely, but it's this. Um, this comes from Hockey Canada. Yeah. But there is a resolution to change one of our regulations yes. to to the checking stuff. So what if it gets defeated? Is this all? That's a great question. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's I mean, it'd be a lot easier for us to deal with that. I know. <laughs> it's Adam Peely and Phantom that we're dealing with right now. And just head coaches. Like just head coaches. Could put a motion to strengthen and say all coaches at every level, but at, that, at this point, it's not the case. Yeah. That include house coaches? Correct. Yeah. Adam Pee Wee Bantam, House and Rep Head, head coaches. coaches, yes. Head coaches have to take or have it. Have it. Have to be certified in checking. Head coaches, Attended. recreational and representative level have to have checking. Okay, head coach. We ha we haven't gone far as far as making sure that the uh, uh, assistant coaches have it. Jason had a question here. I'll try to I'll try to make sure that we get uh, Fair chance to ask questions here. On, on, uh, on the HCR, will it show up that they've taken this? Yes. So, so will it will it show that they've taken it if they've taken their hybrid? Like yes. The coach can't remember when he took his hybrid. Yes. It'll, it'll show up. It, every one from 2012 on says hybrid checking. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. It'll also show if they've done a specialty clinic. Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll also show as a specialty clinic. So, so we can pull that up and see exactly who. Not yet. Okay. No, not yet. <laughs> Go in the HCR and the guy that got yeah. hybrid in 2012, 2014, it'll show up. Yeah. No, you can't tell. Well, you can't tell. There, there has been no special clinics, right? Yes, there has. Yes, there has. yes you, it, it, if it, I mean, I can go on to mine. Especially the goal is different, and that does show up. Yeah. So, scale yeah. shows up as in their own access. But have, have there been specialty clinics? Yeah, but it's up to the MHA to drive them, right? We're not going to go out there and force the you to have them. The membership program's always been a like, user driven programs where you request it and we run it. Put that on. We don't actually want to put it on. So my, my question is if a coach took the the coach the old coach stream and he is certified but it doesn't say the the hybrid checking, then he needs to take this. Correct. Yes. Right? Okay. Before two thousand twelve, right? Yeah. 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 Did we answer your question, Jake? Question? So my, my question comes down to logistics. I mean, I don't have a problem with the idea of this, but logistically we're not there. BC Hockey has struggled just to meet the needs of hybrid and development one coaching courses. We routinely struggle to get coaches into courses and find courses. In a lot of cases, I don't know how other minor hockey associations are, but we don't assign a C coach until third week in September, fourth week in September, because kid got cut from our rep team or whatever. And the logistical problems we already have doing just those, now you've added a checking component, and you've added a mentoring, uh, a field monitoring program for Dev one. How many hundred more instructors are you gonna hire? That's why we're asking to use the MHA for help. Yeah. We're relying on a whole new pool of people, and that's minor hockey association. There's, there's and what's countless the association is need to have those people. Who, who can it be? It can be John Doe who's got no training? Like, what? what well, who signs up for your, on your hybrid currently, right? So we already rely on you for that. Right. So for Dev1, we'll ask you for, to use a similar guy that you feel comfortable or your Mind Hockey Association feels comfortable with in that position. Same with checking skills. Is that 
And I guess that MHAs won't have that. Some won't have that, but we'll travel guys in for that if required. But most MHAs, to be honest, have a development director, have a coach coordinator who's capable of doing that job, and they already do that job as part of their position. So do you have a manual prepared to distribute to us so that we can That is have? on its way, isn't it, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've had the coach coordinator job description forever. We have a manual of how to do the field evaluation stuff, which we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a check-in seminar for your MHA guys. Cool. When does the training seminar start? Like, I mean, we, we haven't found yet. Yeah. So, so let me just sort of clarify what Mike. So we are relying on you people in this room to, to, to help us out immensely. And, we, and it depends on your association. If you feel comfortable that you can go out and if we train you to do a checking course, you can do that through your minor hockey association. We, we will be asking you as well, when we talk about the developmental one, to be field evaluators. And we have a process that we discussed at our coaching meetings that Mike is going to probably tell us more about a little later on, that we will rely on you guys to, to do field evaluations. And you're, you're probably thinking, wow, this is, this is going to be a lot more work for me. And when we met in May, I sort of thought, wow, that's a lot of work for head coaches on top of what they have. But when you really look at the, the, the greater picture, if you're the head coach, you're out there already watching your coaches and their practices. You're going to their games and you're watching them during their games. You're gathering all of that information that is part of the field evaluation. So if, if, you're, if you're good at what you do, you should be able to accomplish those tasks at that time. You're already doing them. We're just asking you to do the paperwork to, to certify the coaches, do the paper. As far as the checking clinic, we will give you the tools to do the checking clinic or we will provide you with instructors to do the checking clinic and they will get certified. But you're there. You as a head coach should want to to be a part of the development of your coaches, you should want to be there when they're on the ice, when they're in the classroom, to figure out who who really is passionate about this this job of coaching. And it's a, and it's a leap of faith, right? Yeah. Like we sat in the room and had the exact same question as you did. Mm -hmm. well, how do we how do we do that? What's our capacity? And we looked yeah. in the field and who we have out in the field. And we don't know every minor hockey association, but we know that there's supposed to be a person in that association with that job description. <coughs> and that's what we built this plan on. That, that's there. We do have that already. Okay. That there. has to be provided if you want us to do it. Now, we will. Uh, I'm assuming that we can then hire these chumps from RPM who are qualified. By the way, that's Robin. Just everybody knows Robin and I go around. Robin, Robin spends a lot of time in New Westminster. So, um, so I can then hire him. I provide the ice. He can give the checking clinic, and our coach coordinator can then sign off on these guys have attended it. Certified yeah. yeah. We'll build a process yeah. around it. I mean, if you want to, like I look at your, your, if you want to pay an outside source, and if we've trained you, but you want to pay an outside source to give that clinic, by all means, I guess there's no problem with that as long as they're certified to do that. It, yeah. it's, get, it's, it's finding the certified people to do it, which is where I'm struggling that I don't believe easy hockey has. And it sounds like you're saying, okay, no, we're offloaded. Well, I'll tell you right now, my coach coordinator is a great guy. He's going through cancer treatment right now. He is not going to be doing this. So well, we'll get someone from the well, association. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right? See, I, I, as a coaching, uh, the, the coaching coordinator for the Okanagan South here, district coaching, I mean, I'm, I'm certified to do the coaching clinics. Uh, all of them, I'm certified to do all the specialty clinics. I, I can be that person that you don't have available. And, and the idea is we would like you guys to be involved. Um, uh, for the reasons that I think I've already stated, to, so that you get to know your coaches, that you're there with them, uh, you know what they're getting. Um, but if you can't be involved, we, we, are, we are available. Like I will travel the valley t to make sure the checking clinics are done in smaller associations. Some of the bigger associations, hopefully, we can train their head coach uh, or a few other coaches within their association to be able to provide that. But if, 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 if there is no means of getting that, BC Hockey will be there to support you. But so, so again, again, functionally, if we find, like, again, Robin, who is a certified person, he can come in, and there's some sort of form that he can sign off on and, and get 
say, four of our coaches certified? That process, I, I let Mike answer the that one. The clinic process is the same thing as, as it would have been for a special account. No, no, I think what he's asking, you're asking. Yeah, I know I understand that. Yeah, but if, if I want to create it so that our coaches, the coaches, like a few of them, become qualified trainers. Oh, like instructors? Yes. So then what we'll do is we'll ask your minor hockey association to nominate individuals to take the training seminar that we're going to put on. Right, and Vancouver, so Lower Mainland, Okanagan, or, or up north, or on the island, and we'll take your nominations and we'll train those individuals. So, is that cost going to be the association's cost? Or We're going to do the seminar for no cost. We have it in our budget, but traveling down from wherever to get there will be on the docket. How long will that be? Uh, we're looking at the weekend, maybe one day, maybe. So, so you can do a weekend course to create your own training. So, what's the cost if you want to take the separate checking? Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, are we all clear on on costs? How we're going to implement this through BC Hockey to you, uh, the associations, and we're clear of the two ways: the specialty or the mentorship, instructional stream, the specialty clinic, and or the fact that during uh, this year's uh, Coach Two, which is the new hybrid name during those clinics that there, if the association can provide us with more seats, people can come at the end. And we'll, we'll try, and I mean, this is where we need your help too, is that if Jason from, from Westside there, he wants me to do a, a Coach 2 hybrid clinic, I'm gonna be really, really adamant that, hey, we wanna train some guys in checking as well within your associations, and we get people from other associations that can I make sure that I have ice 3.30 in the afternoon, 3 o'clock at the end of the day, so that I can let, or you can let all your coaches know that it's there, that we're not jumping it all over the place, that it's standard, it's easy, it's, it's manageable for everybody. So, so we're going to I mean, we're asking for you guys to cooperate. We're asking for, for you people to, to help us out with this too. Yes? Is it for a recreational all teams? All teams. All teams at the uh, Adam Pee Wee and Bannon level. Yes. How much advance are we going to have to know when the courses are coming up? Just to keep that brief. Like, I hope it's not going to be a last. Uh, well, uh, it, it, every, every yeah. district coaching corner does a different thing. And uh, Jason already knows when we've set our clinic dates. I. I, I mean, for the training. The training. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, um, that's really important. I mean, you want know, yeah. to get that prepared. I'll let Mike answer that's that one. Good weekend for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, no, well, obviously, no, like, I mean, yeah, last week, yeah, like, the sooner might not be better than in the season yeah. and all this kind of stuff. We're going to do our best to, to get as much location as possible and get it. It's right now we're at a catch up stage um, because all coaches that you will be taking on that will be attending a hybrid clinic or attending a Dell developmental one clinic this season and on in the future. They will automatically be getting the, the checking requirements. What we're doing with here is we're dealing with here is those that don't have it. So again, it's really crucial for you to know who are we bringing in, who are our coaches, who has it, who doesn't have it. Because what 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 Kurt needs to know from from West Cologne is, well, how many are you talking about? We have five. We have 25. Okay, now we have 30 people already. You know, so. Once we can piece those numbers together, it'll help us a lot in being able to determine how many uh, clinics we have, how many are out there that we still need to, get to catch up. Then after we roll for this year, then we'll be fine because they'll always have that qualification. Uh, with uh, Terrace, we've got a lot of old school coaches. You say it's for head coaches only. We're going to have to bring them back in. Now, what if a head coach can't make it and the assistant coach can't? Are they still going to be eligible for provincials, or is it going to be the going to shut down saying no? This is not eliminating teams from provincial. It, it should no. be. I'd have to find out for you for sure, but I don't. I don't know at this point. I don't think that'd be an issue. We don't. No, no I don't. That would be something that we take down here and address it later. I mean, there's a million questions and, and like logistical items we haven't thought for a lot of these. So he just messes right. the course because it works. Yeah. No. No. Come it's March, we find out. Yeah. Sorry, you're ineligible. Yeah, no, we'll for this season, could it be one coach on every team is required to have the 
all right now. So it says all heads. If the head coach can't, if there's one coach from every team that has the checking component, would that be an exemption for this season only? Yeah, good. Yeah, that has to be done. Make that decision. Harvey County is telling us to do this. We're trying Let's to say hybrid. Let's well, say half hybrid. Yeah. I believe that. So my point is that eventually we'll catch up because uh, as all our new coaches come on board, they'll have they'll have this requirement. I mean, the other uh, do, just do one comment for, first is we have to 2012 to present they have it. We have to look at uh, that's a few years. How many other how many of those coaches previous to that are still involved? And, I, and that's the thing I think you have to look at is when you're selecting your coaches, maybe some of you have already selected your rep coaches, you're going to have to, if they're rep, they're doing developmental ones, so it's not, it's not an issue. But if it's recreational and they're, uh, they're doing the, or it applies to all, does it apply to developmental one coaches too? They need to, yeah, they, they, you need to see if they have, if they took the hybrid 2012 to 2014, they have it, if they don't, they're going to have to take the cho a checking clinic. They can jump into a hybrid. So you need you need to look at when you're appointing this coach. What do I need to do? Does he need the checking certification? Yes. Yeah, so I think you answered part of my question. That is, so if you take a hybrid course in 2010, but took Dev Dev one in 2012, it's not part of the Dev. It's one. not part of the yeah, Dev. So, so that answers the question you were yeah. asking. But the, the okay. three-hour part of it. So again, I'm just trying to look logistically. If again, if we hire someone. How much ice oh, time am I running? Hour and a half. So an hour and a half ice time, hour and a half off ice? Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Or an hour be able to minimum. Bring in, like say we're having our hybrid courses, would we be able to have a segment of that to say, okay? Yes. 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 That's, where I, where that's what I mentioned. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's, we said, having it later in the afternoon. Okay. So that we can. Don't yeah. forget the ice time them. requirement. It can be tied into an existing practice. We'll just go out to the Pee Wee's practice and bring the, the delegates mm -hmm. from the clinic out of the practice. We don't need, a, need you to find us separate ice. We just need, we, and ideally for us, it would be ice with players, so it's a lot easier to implement the, on, the ice session. Yeah, I, that way. And I've done the checking component with a team. It is a lot, a lot, lot better for the coaches rather than having the coaches check each other because the kids, you can get them more involved and active and uh, work with them more and explain a few more things. In your association or, okay. or in Yeah, because we have coaches that you took the, to the, the member of the old coach stream in hockey too, and they coached their kid in hockey too, and they've been coaching sea hockey all the way through, haven't taken another course since then, which was in 2006, and now he's coaching midget C. And he, has, you know, and he probably still has the hockey team manual, and that's all he's using. No, 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 because no, I've, I've provided him with the updated yeah. manual. Good. <laughs> any, any, what, any, uh, one more question? Just one more clarification. Yes. So the add-on, the time component, that we're going to add it on to an existing hybrid. It's already built. It's in. it built into the hybrid. So we're going to, we're going we're, we're to say that if, if you have hybrid prior to 2012, you need to come in and get um, the certification. We're going to. We can. I, I thought what I heard there was we can accommodate those coaches um, by adding on or having them attend the second or later part of the hybrid. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So do we need an extra amount of ice mm. to accommodate that? No. no. If you've hybrid, if you've provided enough time ice time for the hybrid clinic, you're good. good. Okay. Uh, just just to clarify wow. with the, with Jim in the th the three hour clinic, it, you can use. A, it's tough to find ice time. We do a lot of our sort of specialty clinics in the Okanagan during, you know, Monday to Friday. Uh, what you can do for that checking component, if you provide us a classroom for an hour and a half, you can tie that on to a practice. So your peewee team has a practice. So your classroom time is 6 to 7.30. And it can be done at the arena. There's a, a, a conference room there. And at 7.30, the Pee Wee team comes on. You can then run the, the checking component on ice with that Pee Wee team and have the coaches in the stands. Or if you want to invite them on the ice, have them on the ice to observe what's going on. Plus also, if we have to, our hour and a half classroom session could actually be broken into a, a 45 minute, an hour, in the classroom, go on the ice, because that's when the ice time is available, they come back to the classroom and finish it up. What we do in the classroom 
session is we prep the coaches and delegates to go on the ice and do the session. So we need about 45 minutes to do that, 50 minute introduction. We can go on the ice and then come back to the classroom and finish up with some of our other of our other parts of, of that of that uh, module that or that standalone as I call it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what's really important is that if you're going to add on coach you're going to allow other coaches to sign up to that existing hybrid plan. Have you got another additional classroom, uh, larger classroom that you can move What's your upper to? limit? Pardon? What's the class size limit? Well, our class size limit for our hybrid, I, I would say, I would say 60 would be our max. You yeah. know, like we, we'd say 32. So you can only take 15 additional for the last three hours. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, we would take so you can only feed 15 in there. We, I mean, we will be flexible. I mean, I've always been very flexible as far as uh, enrollment in my clinics. You know, I set a limit and it gets to a point where it fills and I get calls from administrators from the hockey associations and, you know, I... I appreciate the flexibility. Yeah, and I think, I think, I think, I mean, there is, there is sort of a saturation level as far as how many you can have there. And 60 is a, is a lot. I've done clinics with 60, and that is a lot. I know, Robin, you've probably done them with 150. The big, the big concern is, is ridiculous. Yeah. You've got 18 players. You're going to put 60 kids up there, 60 coaches on the ice as yeah. well. Yeah. But that's where you get yeah. the But they can also you sit there. They can, yeah. They don't have to. We only want two hybrids year out. So you can only have 30 of those coaches do that three hours. Say 45, 60 coaches do that for three hours. That's your upper limit. Oh. For our association, we co-host with three other associations. I don't. You're gonna have a hard time stuffing these guys in uh, to this if we don't create some bandwidth to see them. Yeah, we have right? coaches. Okay. Does d d is the specialty clinic option with a team and practice that we've talked about just over the last couple of minutes a, a feasible option? I think it's more feasible to, to do a clinic and just say, you know, we've got an instructor. We're gonna put 60 in through and do. Mm -hmm. And just do them all at once. That, I'm glad you included me there. Just, I, no, just, I, just doing the specialty. Do the three hour, the, the and that, that, that is fine with us. We're in on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. Not a question. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> Mike, can you answer that question? How long the training? Day, day and a half. Day, day, day and a half for training. Purposes. We definitely know that the lower mainland there, there's like greater demand, demand so yeah. we're going to have to treat that separately. I'm willing to travel from the Okanagan if BC Hockey's going to get me to the. <laughs> so just real quick, so uh, for the extra courses. That you Where are you from? For starters, uh, yeah. Delta. Okay. okay. Uh, you can just set up in the stands, like because I'm thinking logistics, all the people, and also you know using kids, great idea. Yeah. But say we just bring the kids out just for that session, yeah. how many would you need? Because if you again. Team. Sixty adults on the ice. I, you can have them s sort of sit on the the benches, and then that way they're a little closer but than. If we were to bring the kids out, which I think is a great idea, because that yep. way they can actually body contact to some extent. Of yeah. The, uh, you're, you're asking on the kids. How many kids? I need to ask for a dozen kids. Yeah. Okay. Dozen team. Uh, I've done it with a team. I've done it with a dozen. Yeah. I mean. The players on the ice, coaches in the stand, is probably yeah. the, the, yeah. the more yeah. effective way to do it. And Is I don't know about the rest of you, but our practices are an hour. Our games are an hour and a half. Hour to I, hour I and a half. Pump. We will live with an yeah, hour. Yeah, an hour would be fine. I mean, an hour. You know as what? long an as hour makes it doable. Yeah. Under the model we're talking about, but an hour and a half all of a sudden it messes up your schedule for. Um, we would just spend more time in the classroom. Yeah. We can we can spend yeah. more time in the classroom covering off stuff than we would cover off the ice. We yeah. allow the and flexibility ours. and trust that with our with our district court. What you're telling us, you'll be flexible, you just need your help. Yes. Okay, any other questions as far as checking goes, moving on? Okay, let's move on, Mike. Here we go. So, uh, as we have guys moving in from other provinces, and they come to you guys as head coaches or the associations, and they say, I've done, I've done the progressive uh, coaching program three, and you're going, what? We call ours hybrid, we call ours developmental one, 
and everything. So Hockey Canada, along with the NCCP, have gotten together and they've decided to make it sort of standard uniform across the country that these are the clinic names, okay? So that <laughs> we don't have uh, an Eric Blaze coming from Ontario and saying I've got this credentials and people are trying to match it up because there isn't any standardization in the name. So if you're looking here on your document, you'll see that the IP or initiation program is now called Coach One. Okay, intro to coaching trained. Okay, so the IP or the initiation is Coach One across Canada. We don't have an initiation program. We don't here in BC. Because so not anymore. Not anymore. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. So the next level which we have and which was previously known as our hybrid coach level um, is now called Coach Two. Okay, and then if you see there the the uh, hybrid, or our name of hybrid, has now uh, includes coach one and two. So our coaches are getting certified at both levels, one and two, if they take the hybrid. Um, the certification of these, if you look at that, um, they need to complete, as usual, the, uh, the uh, written document signed off by the head coach. So they submit to you as a head coach uh, their practice plans, the, the information, you go through it and you sign off on the one piece of paper and that is then sent to BC Hockey. <coughs> the other thing that they need to do is they need to make sure that they go online and they do the making ethical decisions that's online. That's mental. only for Dev 1, we're not going to require oh. it for uh, Coach 2, even though it's written up there, oh, we're okay. not going to make you guys do MED for that. Okay, so the so MED does not to do the online portion? They don't need to do the MED. The MED. They have to do the online, which is Hockey University, which yeah. is different yeah. than the MED. Yeah. Where is yeah. MED? It's on the Coaching Association of Canada website. Yeah. Can you link it from your website so it's easy to find? I'd love to. Yeah. Actually, what's, what's supposed to happen is uh, so we can scratch the that databases are supposed to yep. yes. merge together. Yes. Yeah. The databases are going to merge together at some just point. And I've been I don't care if it's just a stupid link. It's You're trying to find things, things like yeah. that. Yeah. I get it. Possible. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, we'll work on that. Okay, so we'll get that. So that was something. Okay, so. Um, for the hybrid level or the coach one and two as we call it here in BC and they will get certified it'll say on the HCR that after they've completed it and been certified they'll have their coach one and two uh, they do not need to do the making ethical decisions component to it okay moving on into what we call the competitive streams uh, the intermediate the old intermediate uh, is just going to be developmental one so any of you that have an intermediate designation, and it says that on your HCR, if you've seen that in the past, that will flip over to developmental one. So any of those changes, and anybody who's taken the hybrid previous to, to uh, this year, in your HCR, it, it'll have said hybrid, coach stream hybrid, and checking it'll all flip over to coach one, coach two, I guess with the checking designation, if they've done the checking. The check Okay, it'll be independent of the two. Uh, for developmental one, anybody to be certified and realizing that when they complete the clinic, they are trained, they are not certified, there is the other components that they need to complete. And so that's something you need to make clear with your coaches. Just because you've take the, taken the clinic doesn't mean you're, you're fully eligible. You are eligible to coach that year and complete that year behind the bench. But in order to coach that next year, they need to make sure they finish their package. Okay, so in order to get certified, they need to finish the, the, uh, the workbook, send that in. The next thing they need to do is they need to, uh, they, they will have to complete the MED portion, which is called competition introduction and they will also need to complete a field evaluation. So we're going to talk a little bit more detail on the field evaluation. So just for your new coaches that are taking your developmental one this year. So if you've pointed a coach and he says, I need to do the developmental one, you need to tell him, take the course, finish the workbook, do a field evaluation, and do the MED component and he will get certified. 
and realize there is a difference be, be, between being trained and certified. Trained, they're good for just that year. If they decide they want to coach the previous year, if they haven't finished all of those, I guess there is a little leadway on the field evaluation component. Um, we'll see how, how that goes. We'll discuss that in a few minutes and, and determine from there. But they need to finish those three components to be certified. And, and the things that I'm kind of looking over at Mike, we did discuss a little bit at, at our meetings and, and we're, we're still not, uh, um, I mean, it's a logistics thing again to, to get things done. Question, Craig? Yeah, it says here that developmental one prior to 2009. So if they have the developmental one prior to that, Correct. they would have to take the MED online. Just MED, yeah. Yeah. So they have to take that. So that's yes. something we need to notify. And no field about. Whereas anyone from yeah. 2009 to now needs field about and MED. Yeah. So, it was so if we have a somebody took the developmental one in 2010, yeah, they have to do a field evaluation yes. and the MED. Yeah. Yes. Why yeah. is the line in the sand on the 09? I don't know. That's Hockey so Canada. This is, this is all developed by the Coaching Association of Canada, which is a or, good organization. And okay. they passed it down through Hockey Canada, and they built this, and they told us to make it feasible to our members. Yeah. So, so getting into the, the, the next component of and that. This has to be done this, sorry, and this has to be done this current season. Our priority will be for those that are doing the course this year. But I mean, we'll have to. Like, Realistically, we have to make some leeway for those coaches that aren't well, going to be able to have time yeah. to do it. Yeah, you have a, a guy that took developmental one yeah. four years ago. Yeah. So and that's yeah. why we need the minor hockey association to be like, this is the guys, this is the list of guys you have to do. Okay. And I have to go see a practice with this guy. And do that practice and you send the evaluation sheet to me, which you're all trained for. There'll be an online training seminar for the person that's going to be responsible for this. And they go out and evaluate the practice, which a coach coordinator would do or a development director would do in the MHA. Formalize the document sent to us and then on that front. So and then once, okay. Some person from the yeah, well, why, why don't, well, I'll the other that was, that was my whole finish my presentation. That was my genius thought, that, you know, the questions. same person can do all that, but okay. realistically, if that's going to work, I, I don't know yeah. your minor hockey associations, so I can't tell you if that person's the same, but when I came up with the idea of how to make this feasible, it was that same person. Yeah. Well, are you going to have the training session at the same time? Is the, I mean, the, the training one? session is going to be online for the field evaluation. Yeah, okay. So that can happen at, at any point. So I, I, maybe to answer a few questions, well, I'll continue with the presentation, and, sure. and, and that's fine. So as, as we've alluded to, anyone prior to 2009, anyone, that includes me, who has a developmental one, I need to go online and do the MED. Okay, there's no field evaluation needed for those coaches. So anyone prior to 2009. After 2009, field evaluations need to be done, and the MED needs to be done as well. How we discussed at our coaching committee meetings this will be done is uh, there will be a webinar training program that, again, we're asking for your support as, as head coaches of minor hockey, coaching coordinators with your minor hockey association, that we're able to train you through this webinar and you will be able to go out and do these field evaluations. Now, a lot of you are probably, I mean, and the field evaluation involves watching games. It just involves and, watching one practice. And one practice. No games. No games? One practice. one practice, okay? So one practice you have to go out. And I believe a lot of you are already at two or three or four or five practices of your coaches already. Remember, this is only for representative rep teams and hopefully you can help us out. We will provide you with a webinar, a webinar that will train you to do the field evaluations. I'll let Mike maybe explain a little bit more on that. Uh, field out the uh, field evaluation and then make sure your coach does his MED and he will be certified. Finally. Finally. <laughs> okay. For now. For now. Yeah, until next year, come back here and do a whole bunch of more stuff on this. A any comments, questions? Yes. What if we have high performance one coaches or advanced one coaches? We'll get we're gonna get to that part of the Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll move on to that question. Well just is it the coach.ca site that That's correct. Yes. And you access it through your locker profile. And it says there are currently no virtual courses scheduled. Please check. I'm not gonna comment on the coach.ca website <laughs> right now or like but that's where we're supposed it. to be getting it? That's exactly how you do it. And we'll send information on how to do it, but I'm not going to sit here and try to explain okay. how yeah. that's no, no, but that's yeah. where. Like yes. Why, because I don't know. Okay. 
Okay. Told you all yeah. at the start of yeah. this. There's a lot of still. All There's a lot. Of yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so developmental too. There is a little note on there. Um, in order to be certified, they must complete their D2 written assignment. Okay, and but development two, there used to be part of our requirement development two was you had to go online to take the ethical decision making. So has that been removed from development two now? Oh, um, it's right here. It's in. Oh, it is there. So yeah. then, yeah. The, the ethical decision making that coaches would have taken in the development two, the online course, the NCCP site. Yeah. Would that be? Is that the same one you're talking about? That's not required for the Dev one. It was after 2010, right? Isn't it? Yeah, I, I lose track of time. Yeah, I think it was 2000, no, 2008. What they need to do. Moving on, let's go on to the high performance. As that question came up, known as the advanced, before advanced one, advanced uh, plus theory two. It's now known just as high performance one certified. Um, taking the clinic trains you again. In order to be certified, you need to finish the CAC multi sport modules through the Coaching Association of Canada. Uh, you must also do the MED evaluation for competition level or uh, comp development. Okay. And that person would have already done their field evaluation yeah. as they're considered certified yeah. on this side? Yeah. And so that's prior to 2010. So there's and then a lot, a lot of coaches that this would impact, but regarding the multi-sport modules, those are available through the Coaching Association of BC, and they involve things like leading drug free sport, um, ethics and coaching and stuff like that, and those are actual sit down in the classroom courses. But the amount of coaches that that particular one will impact is so yeah. few that I mean, it's not a huge, yeah. a huge concern. Anyone uh, 2010 present, I mean, it's, they must do the field evaluation of a practice and a game and the MED. Uh, and is, do they need to do the uh, CAC, the multi-sport? No, because no, that's, that's included, that's in, that's the included in the course, yeah. yes. Okay, so. I mean, it's, uh, there's just a few, st I guess, hoops, steps that coaches need to go through in order to get their certification. Again, we, we are delivering the message. We are not the, the maker of the message. It's come down through CAC and uh, through them to Hockey Canada. To Hockey Canada passed on to the branches. This isn't just happening in British Columbia. This is also happening across Canada. Um, and uh, so it affects not just us, but uh, other branches across Canada. Questions? I don't know if we need to go through any more of this. Any what questions? Coaching, Coaching Association of Canada. Making. Yeah. Jim. Currently, um, so for high performance one, you have to complete the MED for college development. But if you if you go and do the high performance one, say this summer, then you have to do the they're completely independent. They're, yeah, it's, yeah. They're de no, you don't have to go through the three steps to get to the one. You can, whatever level you're at, you take that MED course, online course, that n is needed to complete your certification for that level. If you look back on here on the first page, so there's under the community coach stream, there's an MED called Community Coach Stream. Then in the Competition Introduction Stream, it's called MED Competition <coughs> Instruction, Introduction, sorry. And then in the Competition Development Stream, there's, so there's three MED, different ones for each on the three different levels. So whatever level you're taking, that's the MED you need. So for us, we're dealing with our development of one coaches, they need to have competition and MED introduction and for our high performance junior coaches and, and then uh, AAA they'll need yeah. competition. Yeah. Um, is that the back of the room? Excuse me. At the back, back of the room. room. And I'll clarify yeah. what MED is and how you do it. So yeah. MED is currently taught in Dev 1. It's a module in there. And taking MED when they say that means you're going online and taking a test where they'll give you a bunch of scenarios and you have to choose sort of yeah. which one's proper. That's how it works. Yeah. I believe if they've, uh, if they've done the uh, actual course, they can go right to the test part if they want. Yeah. 
there is a there is a sort of a online classroom component that they can go through, and that's that is offered uh, by CAC that they can go through that and then take the test. There are some stipulations as far as I think you can take it three times, and it's the three strike rule. Third strike, you're out, and uh, is it two strikes? It's a, it says two and after that. Okay, after that you have to take. So it's, it's like a challenge. So if they've done the developmental one clinic or the hybrid clinic, or not hybrid, the high performance clinic, they can then just go on and take the test, challenge to the test. And if they pass, they're good. They seconds time, they fail it, they then have to go through the online component of the course. And there is a cost to that. I think, I think after they've done the developmental or the developmental one or the high, high performance one, it, the, the test is free if they have to take the course uh, for, okay yeah oh it's so what you're saying Mike is if you don't pass yeah yes exactly okay um, and and if on that document uh, you'll notice advanced too is high performance too so we're just talking about uh, standardizing the names across the nation and hopefully that uh, you as a head coach, when guys come from other jurisdictions, they have uh, a name that you're familiar with. Wait, okay. is this information on our website? No, thank you. Sorry, can I direct coaches to, to this? Not doctors. Yeah. No. But the, the goal yeah. behind this is because we get the information filtered from Hockey Canada, the Coaching Association of Canada, so we're going to constantly be updating it. And we have a communications plan to put it on our website as an active hyperlink. Continually update, and we'll send information to your registrars when it has been updated or which portion's been updated. Okay. The uh, HCR will get switched over as well. In the, 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 as it says, uh, that hasn't been done yet, and, and we're not quite sure how soon that's going to get done. But it, when it gets done, we're doing a bulletin on that, I believe. So we'll get a your. Your association will get a bulletin, or your district will get a bulletin saying the HCR is switched over, and, and now the new terminology is, is, is listed under the coaches. Well, coaches have the ability now to go through the coach.ca to get, like, they'll have places where their qualifications can be registered with the Coaches Association of Canada Correct. as well as HCR? Yeah. Yeah. And both, they'll all show the same things in yeah. theory. St standardized uh, names. Uh, Pessimist. Okay, next slide. Let's see what's up next. We've we've kind of c covered this. The the couple things that I want to point out on this slide, more importantly, because we've talked about the certification, where this is important is at your tier one, bantam, and your midget, and uh, levels. And when we talk about the midget. Uh, male, we talk about only the MMA, the Major Midget League, and the female uh, Midget uh, League, that those coaches have to have their high performance certification. Okay? So those coaches at that level, and what it is, is it, Hockey Canada is making that mandatory so that they can prevent, compete in interprovincial championships and national championships. So. Uh, one of the coaches, we talked about this at our meetings, one of your coaches has to be H, uh, high performance certified. Uh, they need to be rostered to the team and they will then qualify for the interprovincial or national championships that go on. Okay, and this is only at the tier one level, a bantam and the major midget level. So tier two, it does not apply to. And all midget. Your tier one midget, it does not apply to. It's only the major midget. Questions? If you're a tier one association, please, whether you're going to say a hard, hard, hard. That's your doesn't play tier one over a tier one association. You do play tier one for provincial yeah. championship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're a tier one association, you will play in the tier one provincial championship. Okay, if you're a tier two, you can move up to a tier one level league. Um, so uh, back to the major midget, the, the male and the female, uh, there are associations that are tier one have their tier one midget, and they're also part of a major midget uh, area. Use the Okanagan because that's where we are. Only the major midget coach has to have that certification, the HP1 certification. 
the tier one coach doesn't have to have the HP1 certification. Pardon? And only, and only head the head coach. Questions? Same for females, too. Yeah, same for females. Yeah, I mean, we have a, re a regional team here in the Okanagan for females. They, their head coach has to have the HP certification. That's just for major, major females. Yeah, not, you're for tier, tier not for your tier one. I, as I said, the regional team, our regional Okanagan um, female midget team, that Talking coach. Like a total of 17 teams. Yeah. So, do the female Bantam A head coaches have to have this? If they're, if they're yes. Yes. Yeah, if you, if it's a oh, tier so one. Yeah. If they don't call it a tier one, that's no. why I'm wondering. What do they, they call it? Just Bantam A. Bantam A. Is that oh. provincially or? That's provincially. Yeah. That's provincially. Yeah. There's only one in females. So, it's called so yeah. No, the, only, the only teams, the only provincial championship that this will affect is our Bantam AAA Tier 1 Provincial Championship, which we've had 68 teams at over the last three years. Those coaches that are competing in that competition have to have this if their team is advancing. So but we have female teams. Yeah, no, yeah. That's your question. I'll have to yeah. I'll double check, but I'm quite sure. They'll have, they'll but they don't go it. beyond BC. That's no, correct. they do not go to correct. Correct. Then, then they don't need it. Only teams that are competing in a, outside in a, BC. Outside yes. BC. Yes. Yeah, unless you go international. Fact, the Junior B is not on this list for that specific reason. The Junior B play in BC. They play in a tournament provincial or, or in, in Western Canada, and that, but they don't play in a national championship like yeah. the Talos Cup also that are be. that are yeah. midget, major major league teams and the Royal Bank Cup that are junior yeah. A teams play. Yeah. Qu question: This gentleman, do you, or answered. I should be able to figure this out, but I can't. So, in, I'm from Comax, Comax, excuse me. We have a Bantam A and a B team. Is it so tier one or tier two? Why do you know? That's why I'm asking. You're, you're tier two. You guys, I believe yeah. you have your tier, tier two. one association. Tier one, yes. and you played in that tier one league on the island. Yes. yes. So, to play okay, in that okay. league, you're, all, you're, gonna, okay. you're a coach. I'm from Alberta. Uh, no, that's okay. Well, the head coach has to have high performance one. For this, what qualifications do the assistant coach staff have? Just a hybrid? No, they would the be dev, 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 developmental one. one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so assistant dev one. Yeah. Head or coach H high performance. Oh, pardon me? Or HP one, they could have HP yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. There's no limit. You could put your assistants through it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we're doing a high performance one this summer, and then we'll be doing yeah. more down the road to catch up. So saying that, same yeah. catch up. Necessity. Yeah. This is a much more, I mean, we're not expecting the West because we're a tier two, but yep. I guess functionally the question is, say you're an Abbotsford and you, know, you rarely ever win a Phantom tier one, and do they have to have that coach <laughs> to qualify? <laughs> no, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to help uh, yeah. if Do they have to have the coach to play in the provincial? I understand they can't if they go beyond, but say they get to provincials, can they still they, play and, and, and win it? But they can't advance because they don't have this. You, ne you need to have a rostered, high-performance one coach. So we're going to be basically paying a few people just to be on rosters. Most associations, I checked the that. Lower Mainland, most, so in fact, I think all associations have at least one person that can meet these qualifications pretty easily. You but, put but that point person is, on the Phantom A roster. We're going to get around this by putting people on rosters who are qualified but they're not really the coach. You don't say. <laughs> really? Really? Like, really? Yeah. If like, worse comes to worse, yeah. I, I, in yeah. that situation, I, that's a little bit of I, I guess. I think, I think that comes down to an ethical, an ethical yes. thing for your association. Yeah, that's not making pretty good ethical. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I myself, I, I myself feel that if you have a coach that has gone through the high performance one training certification and he is your head coach, then you do what you can to keep that, that guy around. Um, and, and you want to make sure that, that you don't have to use that loophole. That, that to me, would be something that I would not. I don't think. Pardon? No, but you know, part of my issue there is yeah. you can have your best coach in your association be a PBA coach. He can't get into the high performance one. He could, of course. Yeah. Can he now? Yeah. See, we, we've. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just just so you we are like uh, Jim had mentioned, there is a HP one this year at UBC at, at the fifteenth through to the nineteenth. For any of your coaches that are interested, next year we're only offering one. This year, next year we offer two. We we see the need for this. We understand with the new information coming down from Hockey Canada or from the Coaching Association, Hockey Canada to us, we need to offer more. We are also being more flexible as far as as whether the Pee Wee coach could get it now. I mean, because there is a need. There's going to be a need. This fellow is going to have possibly a chance at coaching a, a team going to national championships at the Bantam or Midget level. So we, we need to provide him with with the credentials. Okay. And delivery wise, we're looking yeah. at options to put some modules online yeah. right over two weekends. Like I know it's a stress yeah. for someone to take two hundred dollars a week of work to be a volunteer coach in many cases, but I mean, that's the reality of, of yeah. the modules we have to satisfy to make that person at that level. Yeah. So we, is there going to be any is this grows and add more courses? Are you going to look at the cost of this? Because we've registered two of our coaches to take HP1, fifteen hundred bucks a pop for the week to take HP1. You know, we're getting the bills in the door, we're paying the bills, obviously. And we're a lower mainland association, so that's really all our cost is. If you're looking at bringing people, other associations are bringing people down to the lower mainland, paying the fifteen hundred bucks, paying the cost of the week, you're looking at you're looking at having to put out. Three four thousand dollars to train an HP one coach to coach a band if they want to. And is there any thought process that is this grows and you've got some economy to scale and maybe those costs are going to come back? I mean, I'm looking at different delivery options like modules online and what we can mm -hmm. do to make it make it work. Right now, the, we don't make money on the program; it's a break-even program because of how it's operated. But the, I mean, as the as it goes forward, we'll need to see if it's different options. Yes, we are. You're saying you're going to run two next year, one this year, two the following year? Yeah. How many random AAA well, I, it, jobs are there in the project? The, yeah, yeah, as of next yeah. year, the junior coaches have to have the HP1. So that's. For a minor hockey setting, Major Midget mm -hmm. is not part of minor hockey, right? So just looking at the phantom <laughs> tier one AAA position, it's not that many. No. Is there? No. Well, so, then we'll run, run the so in like four years, yeah. we're going to be saturated with high performance one coach. And we'll have the yes, best hockey player. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that's what's going to happen. That's my concern is these high performance qualified and certified coaches are going to become a commodity. And so many associations now are paying their, their rep non parent coaches, even just an honorarium, that if they've got a coach coming in going, I've got high performance, that's a commodity. And that is a real concern for me when you're looking at the minor settings, and that's the concern I have, that there's a disconnect between Hockey Canada and the volunteer minor association. It's a real, it is a disconnect, because they don't realize that there's guys that are going to go get that high performance. And it's expensive, like he says. And some of the associations are saying, how can I do it? And we pay for this guy next year, G. You know, next door is offering them three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. We can only afford three, and we've paid for his course because I've said pay half now, and the other half when they become that certified high performance coach at the end of their second year coaching in your association. And at least you've got something back from mm -hmm. them. But yeah, yeah. no, no that, I, that's I, the first thing I heard. I was in Toronto for some meetings. That was the first thing I heard from Ontario Hockey Federation is that it's going to drive market prices up. Yeah. It's going to become out of the market for us. Let's, yeah. Let, let's, uh, th those are sort of questions I think that later on uh, probably can be discussed, whether it's in this meeting or other meetings. So moving on to a mandatory certification for minor uh, recreational coaches. Um, so this, is, this isn't anything new. We've, uh, BC Hockey has been asking that all sort of recreational coaches, non, um, as we say here, non-carded coaches, that they have their, their hybrid, or as we will call it now, Coach 2 certification. Uh, th the only change here for you to understand is that uh, sort of policing this will now be done through BC Hockey, that we will be in charge of checking the rosters to make sure that the roster has a carded coach on it we will be the ones then sending the information off to the MHA um, 
telling them that they have a non-carded coach, um, non-certified. non-certified carded coach, uh, or on their bench, and that things need to be done. Who, who did it in the past? Just, uh, it'd be up to the minor hockey association. Yeah. The way the just up to the minor hockey yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pacific Coast does it down there. I know Omaha did it up here in the Okanagan. They were the ones that would be checking the rosters. Island does it. So, so we've taken that away from the, the those boards, and we've taken it on that we will now be in charge of that. Yeah. Any? I don't step, think there should. Step it, one is, is no, it's just a high grade. It starts step one. There's no. There's yeah. No yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What we need to do in BC though is we still need to get those numbers changed. We're having we're we're in the low. Low 80s, high 79, 78 percent of our delegates that are submitting their their letter of verification. Let's get that up into 85 to 90 percent. Let's get you know if you're sending a coach off to attend that hybrid coach two clinic. Make sure that they're completing, they're submitting to you the material, and you're signing off your letter of verification to get them certified. One of the things I mentioned to Barry, and I really recommend we'll we kind one. of look at it. If you go on and you check the clinics in your association, and the Lower Mainland has it, and the Okanagan would have a similar problem, is that your associations are right on top of each other. So if you can't get into a clinic, say in Burnaby, you can go to Vancouver and get into a clinic. But when Burnaby runs their list of clinic attendees, it only shows the one that attended the clinic in Burnaby. It doesn't show their coach that went over to Vancouver. So you need to get it, yeah, you need to get another report it says coaches under your database, regardless of where they attended that clinic. They were so at a different clinic. Yeah. But the but the what the office will be doing now is they'll be sending out a, a list of non compliant teams and so that will just like they do for development one. It's so, not a, it's not a comprehensive list though. No, okay. The dev one well, will say you're missing here, yeah, I hear you. or something like that. Please they talk don't to list Barry all about the that. coaches. Yeah. It's just on the thing. You really need a report that the so, so what you, you well, I, because I check to see you know I do all the certification uh, training can the whole, I can see yeah, I can see who's different. in there so I know it's I know what you're saying is you at in Burnaby you can't you can't get access to the the Kelowna clinic where two guys went to so you get a you get a message uh, or you you say I, I I know you're not certified and they go I was in the Okanagan and you're going yeah but I don't have a record of See, it. Yeah I had is... a guy this year like I'm the district yeah and I had a guy take it in the Okanagan so there was me know me did he take a clinic he told me he took a clinic I could have taken him at his word yeah but it wasn't showing up yeah. he never went well, it's, it's <laughs> he's registered it's but I had it's to get them to verify that he didn't he go never showed. yeah so he tried to See, I'm right on top of it. He didn't get away with it. <laughs> so I, I know I understand where you're coming. Uh, that's a that's a logistics thing, and I think that's something that um, Mike or the office has to work tweak. out. Yeah, yeah tweak. tweak. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on. We'll move on to the next one here. Uh, we, we yeah, we've discussed all this. We don't need to talk good, about this. Right? Any? Okay, good. Let's move on. And uh, this is this is the last of the things that we need to talk about. Um, I'm I'm a teacher, and and uh, I mean we always uh, it's a touchy subject right now. But I'm always looking to develop myself professionally to become a better teacher. I've also looked at it as as a hockey coach and a presenter um, at clinics. I'm always looking to to enhance my, my ability to be presenting to you, to get information, to get uh, new ideas. Uh, I'm fortunate that I work within a Hockey Skills Academy program in my school district, in my school, and I have a lot of outside coaches that, that are, are in working with our program, so I'm always getting information from them. I do clinics, I get information from, from you guys at clinics, from the coaches coming in. Um, I go to the Hockey Canada seminar, I attend as many things as I can to develop my coaching repertoire, my background. I do it educationally as well as uh, for the hockey. And so w I, I think this is a great thing. I think it's a good thing uh, because I heard the comment, we've got a lot of old school coaches out there. Things have changed. I mean, w w this isn't 1960, 1970 anymore. 
we're, we're 2014, things have changed. There's a lot of great things out there. If you go out in the lobby, you'll see things that are happening in the hockey coaching development world. And uh, this, I think, just keeps, keeps a, the passion alive. And what it is, is, is it's becoming mandatory through the NCCP, National Coaching Certification Program, that you do what they call maintenance activities. And basically, it is doing certain things to keep up your certification. Um, I think in other, other sports, they're already doing this. I think, Donald, are they doing, are they doing this in soccer? Similar. Similar, okay. So soccer is doing this, that you need to do some maintenance to continue with your credentials, your coaching credentials. So what they're, they're saying here is we've, uh, there's a maintenance program to follow. Here in BC, uh, at the community sports, which is the, the uh, recreational level, uh, we're not going to apply it, but the... the quite, yet, quite, quite yet. okay. We're not going to apply it just yet, but as you can see, it's a five-year period in which to do your maintenance and you need to score 10 points or accumulate 10 points. And by attending specialty clinics, uh, symposiums, different coaching clinics that are out there offered by private groups or by BC Hockey, things that, that, that we do, you will build up these maintenance points. And if you get your 10 points, you continue on with your certification. So this now, would be worth points. Yeah, this, this here would be worth points. Now, the, I guess the other opt out of this would be is taking the course again. Coaching a team, you get points as well. Yeah, you get coaching for coaching teams. So. Actually, I have two points. Question: I don't see where it says coaching team gives you points. Yeah. On here. Okay. And I, it does. That's yeah. a good answer. Yeah. The second thing I don't see on here is, like we do development. I'm sure most of the other associations do minor hockey. Do your own in-house development. Could you not develop some sort of form sure. that yeah. gave points for you know one hour? Because we do a one and a half hour clinic every month for coaches. Excellent. So could we? Yeah, build that into this yeah. mm -hmm. and have a form where a coach coordinator can sign off on and our register can file. I, I mean, and that's what, I, I guess that's what we're look, looking for is, is, and I think it's information that maybe some of the smaller associations are going, oh, okay, well, maybe I need to start doing that with my coaches, some of the other associations to keep them current and, and saying, hey, you know, you need to do this maintenance. I'm going to offer a few, you know, hour and a half sessions throughout the year and you will get your points and, and that'll keep you certified. Yeah, uh, it's new. To, it's new to us. We've. I know we discussed it at our meetings. Uh, not th this year we did, but even previous. And we were coming up with, well, we'll work, how do we get guys points? What are the things that are acceptable? And uh, we've kind of come up with a, a framework of, of where to get these points f from, and we've we've put it down there on paper. But uh, yes, that's that's something something that uh, BC Hockey. We need to decide whether yes, do we give you points for that. Yes. So do we need proof of pre approval from you to determine if that to get points it would have to go yeah. through us absolutely. Yeah. So we got guys who want to do this clinic, hey, you just give it a thumbs up or thumbs down yeah. before they I mean it should be more of a formalized process than the thumbs up, thumbs down system. Yeah. Like it would be something like yeah. it yeah. gets retweeted, you're good to go. It'll yeah. come to the point where we do like a sport quality observation of your conference, of your development program yeah. to deem how many points yeah. you're gonna do. But we are just still developing all that kind yeah. of stuff. Are you going to consider um, having companies who are registered through BC Hockey? You know, and again, I'll use RPM because they're the ones we use primarily. You know, RPM is registered to provide X amount. So all we have to do then is put in service provider was RPM. This is the time frame, and these coaches did this. Okay. Could, I mean, is that something you're talking about? Yes. Is that something you're talking about? Donald? I'll give you a point to the instructors. Yes, yep. we get one as an yeah. sure. And yeah. as a district coach coordinator, as yeah. a member of a coach committee, and sure. all that kind of stuff. When does it start? It started in January. January 1st. January 1st. January 1st. Sure. Yes. So you're on the block. Yeah. Yeah. It seems yeah. pretty fluid for something that started. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems pretty fluid for something that started. <laughs> Just a quick question. Yes. So, um, is there, is there, it started now, Correct. but. So there's that five-year period, so some five years from the time of which you obtained your... No, January the 1st, 2000. Regardless of when you attained it. Yeah, so, so my five years starts 
January 1st of this year. Okay, so for all the, all the continuous improvement and all the courses and all the training you've done since your high performance one taken two years ago is irrelevant. Right. So Correct. Brand new. Been no uh, but I'm but I'm given but 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 the, uh, I'm given five years to accumulate that now. So, it's so a point, though. It's fair. yeah. So yeah. person's taken five specialty clinics in the past two years. Yeah. That's, that's irrelevant. I mean, we have to look yeah. at that. It's a good point. Yeah. Actually, but right now the way it's written and the way it's come down from the CAC is that they didn't yeah. recognize specialty clinics until this year. Yeah. So we have to go and fight that battle with them through Hockey Canada. Is this going to be on their profile, Mike? Yeah. I think it's a good fight. Everybody in this room is going to get three points today? Well, how are we in the room for? Hourly basis. We'll have to do some. We have a reservation list and stuff like that, so we'll have to. I'm not going to go over. Um, so it doesn't apply to the community, but the competition, Developmental One and HP One, these are the coaches that need to, to start accumulating. Mike will make that decision on when the recreational coaches have to start making, uh, getting the points. Sorry, it doesn't count for... Non-carded. Non-carded. Non your community sports, co your recreational hybrid. Div one, coach. Coach two. It's Div one and high performance one coaches are the ones that need to start to get their their points now. Okay. Would you be able to uh, email this PowerPoint? Yes, we're working on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, Question in the back. Yeah, just in, for, for, for developmental, I'm sorry, for HP one, so I took my HP one last summer. Hours doing what? No, it's no. part of the course. It's part of the course. That's part of the course. Uh, once you get certified, is when it's going to start. Correct. And Sean, back to your point, this might be just a unique conversation, but I asked Hockey Canada the same thing because right now our course options that we have in mentorship are limited, so we can't ask guys to take the same thing every year. But apparently, they've developed a whole new stream of. Program. Yeah, I mean, that's quite, I mean, I'm looking at the list here, right? Um, but that's not expansive. That list isn't expansive. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. just, I mean, mm -hmm. I hope not because I've, I've done all those, but they're all, I know. none of them count. Yeah, I know. I know. Unfortunately, one thing that's come out of all of this is that there's a determination in Hockey Canada, Coaching Association, now NCCP, that the head coach is someone different than the assistant coach. And all these Changes apply to the head coach. Down the road, we will look at saying, well, then, you know, once we got our head coaches under control and a handle on that, then do we turn to asking that our assistant coaches have this as well? But there's an evolution for sure. So your requirement to, to for like uh, the field evaluation, for example, for the development one. So is there is is it just parked? So they they got the development one. They were certified at one point. Now they're no longer certified. Correct. So, but is the clock ticking, or can they park it? And three years from now, when they decide that they're going to coach, they can go get field evaluated, and now they're certified. Why? What if a guy's not coaching this year? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they can we'll park it. We'll have to have yeah. experience towards those individual cases, or something that would apply. I think. Yeah. I mean, it makes it makes sense. I mean, there's obviously a million different scenarios. You can sit here all day and discuss them, but okay. if it makes practical sense, I mean, we're, that's what our yeah. our. Okay. There, I'm sure there's uh, there there are a million questions still out there, but I think you guys are probably getting a little bit hungry, a little glossy-eyed, and, and uh, so I'd like to thank you all for being here. We're not finished yet, please. We're just finishing up this session. Yeah, yeah. I'd like, thank you all for being here. Um, I wish you all good luck in the coming hockey season and hopefully you've been able to digest some of this information that you can take it back and uh, help out your minor hockey association in, in interpreting all that's coming down the pipe. I know it's a lot, it's a lot for us to discuss at our last meeting and uh, hopefully, uh, as I say, you guys have got a good foothold on it and things will go well for you next season. Mike, you want to say anything in closing? No, thank you, Kurt. Jim? Anything? Yeah. Okay. Um,